You can experience the epic adventure Wonder Woman 1984 in theaters and on HBO Max, now streaming at no extra cost to HBO Max subscribers. Plus, with HBO Max, stream the greatest collection of series, movies, and exclusive Max originals all in one place. Discover something new to watch, like The Undoing, The Flight Attendant, His Dark Materials, and so much more. Go to HBOMax.com or download the app to sign up and start streaming today. Wonder Woman 1984 is rated PG-13. Wonder Woman 1984 available to stream on HBO Max for 31 days from theatrical premiere. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Views, the podcast where it's Christmas time. Dave, people want to know, yes. will there be stories about <laughs> masturbating on this Views podcast? Jason, believe it or not, I actually have a story about jerking off. Oh, my God. It wouldn't be Christmas without a story about masturbating. <laughs> guys, buckle down, get your family around, turn the fire on. <laughs> it's time to talk about jerking off. All right, roll the intro music. <laughs> Jack fucking woke me up at 7.30 today. Jack on Reed? Podcast. Yeah. Why, what do you say? So if you're, have you ever been in, on East Coast time and you forget that you're calling the West Coast? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I do that a lot. Oh what happened? God. Call me at 7.30. I was like, I thought somebody was dead. Right, we could say anything we want about Jack because he doesn't <laughs> even fucking listen to these. <laughs> That's the kind of manager he is. He just cashes it in. Just to be clear, David. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to go. Jack, Jack's a fucking pussy. (laughs) Jack, Jack, you're a little bitch. I'm going to ask him later today. I was like, just in the podcast? He's going to go, yeah, it was great. (laughs) He's not even going to fucking listen to it. Speaking of Jack going to Miami, my friends and I were, I went to go visit my hometown friends. And we are having this, what they, they brought up this thing, which I had never even heard of. They all, all three of them, well, two of them, Mike and Alex jerk off on airplanes and i never knew this was like a normal thing i never knew this was a normal would be a views podcast without a no i asked i asked alex and i'm like have you ever jerked off on an airplane because we were talking about where we've jerked off yeah <laughs> like that this was our like 3 a.m conversation yeah and alex is like i've jerked off on a flight before and mike goes oh yeah i would do it every time i or alex mike goes i've jerked off on a flight before and alex goes oh yeah i, c- I can't do a flight without one and I was like, what? what the fuck? He ha- he says he doesn't remember the last time he's flown where he hasn't jerked off. And he's visited me like four times in the last two years. <laughs> so it's not like he doesn't fly a lot. That's fucking insane. He's saying like the altitude, like he has to jerk. Like I understand yeah. you get hornier on flights. I've never heard of that. No? No. Okay. Because my- Joe? I've never done it or heard of it either. Oh, never even okay. had sex on an airplane. Well, I I think that's a little more crazy, but like the but when 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 they were telling me that they I jerk- don't I think having sex with someone makes more sense than going in there and <laughs> just doing it yourself. Yeah. No, when they were telling me that they jerk off on the airplane, they were looking at me like I was the weird one, <laughs> and I felt weird. I felt attacked. I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm the odd one out in this story. Did you and then try? I even lied to them, and I was like, yeah, I jerk off. <laughs> just to cover my own ass you did take a flight back home right yeah yeah well i yeah i did and then the next day i flew back here it was so funny i was i was I flying he's in a good mood when he comes to see you yeah <laughs> I, I was i was flying back here um from chicago i was like really late to my flight and it was like you know it's the holidays alex is super gullible he's really easy to convince of things yeah. and and he's like dude you're gonna miss your fucking flight he's like freaking out and i'm like oh dude it's chill i'm flying jabawi airlines like it's so <laughs> nice and he goes oh yeah that sounds awesome <laughs> <laughs> Like a good, you know, a good three minutes went by, and I was like, "Dude, did you think I was serious about Jabawi Airlines?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, is that not real?" And I'm like, "No." And he's like, "Well, I don't know. I don't know what you fucking fly." <laughs> he was like, he was like really pissed. There was one time. There's this place. This was this is when we were younger. There was this place in 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 my hometown. There's like different towns, like neighborhoods, and one is called Greg's Landing, and we were driving through it. And I told him, I was like, do you know the story of why they call them this and why they call it this? And he's like, no. And I was like, there was this man once, he was a pilot and he was flying, he was flying from New York to LA, but he, he was, his gear, the gears weren't working in his, in his aircraft and he had to come down and crash. And, and, uh, his name was Gregory and he was with his wife, Amy, and they crashed right here in Vernon Hills <laughs> and they, they didn't have enough supplies to continue the journey. So they just set up homes here and they started building homes here. And that's why they call it Greg's Landing. <laughs> and, and he believed that story for like a couple of years. He believed that story. And that was really nice. What'd you do when you were there? Did you play video games? No, we went to we went we played spike ball. Have you ever played spike ball? Oh yeah, I love spike ball. I fucking bullshit. Okay, so let, let me set this up. My friends have 
It's my, hard. It's really hard. It's really hard, but it's really fun, and anybody can play it. That's kind of like the fun part about it. Um, so my friends, uh, we were talking about how much money we have in our bank accounts, yeah. and <laughs> Alex. <laughs> whoa, what? Classic David. Classic David and the boys conversation. <laughs> and, and, the, and the thing is, is like, I, I actually put I put the the guilt on the boys because <laughs> obviously David's gonna have that conversation. But it's like the boys forget. Like they want to have that conversation again. I just think because they know what it is. Um, so yeah, I found out that they have they each have actually they all have the exact same amount in their bank account six thousand okay. dollars. Um, it's like sixty four hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm telling you this because and they're all living together. Yeah, they're all living together. Yeah. Um, I I got them apartment. What's rent there? Um, well, they don't pay the rent because I got them the apartment. Right. We went to go play spike ball, and I was like, and I was like to John and Mike, I was like, um, let's make a bet. Like if you beat me and Ilya, I'll give you guys a thousand dollars each. Yeah. And if we win, you owe me $250. Because I was like, that's fair. Like, I wanted to, like, ratio it so it's not, like, <laughs> it's fucking... It's not fair at all. Okay, well, regardless. <laughs> because that would that would mean you have $24,000 in your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> regardless, I, I wanted to ratio it and make it work, whatever. We played a game, and they fucking won. Oh. And I was fucking mind-blown. So I was... I, I, mind-blown. This is Mike and John beating me and Ilya. Ilya's... So horrible at spike ball. Ilya is the one of the worst players I've ever seen. And um, also, Mike and John are like bigger guys. Too. Yeah, they're bigger so guys. They, so it was, I, I can't imagine they move as well as you. So two. Was, and was, they they get to play all the time. I know. Oh, I know. They play a lot. I know. I know. They play a lot. So I was like, "Fuck this, double or nothing." And we played again, and they fucking <laughs> won again. Nice. Now they have fucking two thousand dollars a piece, which is huge for them. Um, and then I was like, and then and then Ilya. Uh, this is the second time we lost. And every time we play, it's best two out of three games. And now Ilya's like in tears. And he's like, he's like. Not tears. No, he is. He's, he's tearing up because he feels like such a loser. Because, <laughs> he's because, not here to defend himself. No, no, no. I, I, uh, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. He's like, I feel like a loser. I cannot win at everything. I'm so, he was like, he's crying to me. He's like, I'm so bad at sports. Like I can't, the only sport I'm good at is running and I can only do it in a straight line. You're so short and you're so much better looking, David. Oh. It's No, but it's it's really funny because I, I, I wish Ilya was here to, to say the same thing. Yeah. But he's just really bad at sports for how athletic he is there's not a sport that he can play well it's so fuck i'm not fucking with you so he's crying he's like we have to go again like just for my fucking ego like i can't do this i can't do this oh, again no. so i was like okay fine so we said double or nothing again and uh, this uh, this was for for them to win three thousand dollars in total so three thousand dollars each and um and uh and they were like no no way we're not fucking playing this we don't want to take any more money from you like they're really good at that they're like this is stupid like fuck this this is gonna ruin our friendship like we don't want to take money right. i was like and Ilya was like fuck you <laughs> fuck you if, if you don't take this bet i'm just gonna give you three thousand dollars right now anyway yeah. so so whatever you want you better take the fucking bet Ilya was so fucking furious he's like we gotta fucking play this um and we lost we lost <laughs> we lost again we lost again, and this was this was the game where we were like dead ass. This is the last bet, right. and take it or leave it, like th whatever. So we lost, and we're like, we gotta go home. Ilya's so fucking pissed. I just think it's funny because I was like, well, that was the bet that was that made it enough for me to talk about this on the podcast. So I'm good. Um, <laughs> so like, I have a story out of it. Ilya's fucking furious, and we're walking out. We have all our stuff, and I was like, well, technically that was our last game because we dead ass. We're leaving, and I was like, <clears throat> how about we go back in there? And we play for three thousand dollars. <laughs> I'll give you three thousand if you win, and you give me three thousand if I win. Yeah. And um, and Ilya's like, that's a brilliant idea. Like that doesn't interfere with our dead ass. Right. So we convince the boys after like thirty minutes. They do not want to play it anymore. They're like, we're not playing this anymore. We're done. So now we're playing for three thousand dollars a piece, and we lose that game. So and that was like the final that was the final final game like I was like we we're going home after this so each of the boys walked away with six thousand no dollars wow. from the gym that day yeah which is it's literally their bank account right after we were we went to go get pizza and John was late to go hang out with his family 
and we're waiting for the pizza outside the pizza place and his family calls and like where are you and J- and john's like i'm coming i'm coming we're waiting for pizza and john hangs with the phone and he looks at me and he goes he goes really we had to play a third game now i'm late for dinner with my family <laughs> <laughs> we just doubled your bank account and you're gonna fucking bitch about being 20 minutes to dinner with your family and i called Ilya, and i was and Ilya was like john if i was there i would fucking kick your ass right now um but yeah no it was really it was really it was a big loss for it's us like being a bunch of 24 year olds rolling around your old high school town it's the best <laughs> is it and then Ilya texted me for uh, 45 minutes after we got to our house and he goes i've been thinking what to text you but i have nothing because i'm confused and cold inside it feels like my girlfriend just broke up with me i'm just a hole of emptiness <laughs> I texted back. I haven't been the same since. John keeps asking me about LA, but I'm just staring out the window. <laughs> Ilya goes, I was going to go work out, but then nothing matters anymore. So now I'm driving home in silence, driving the speed limit. And then he sent me a song he's listening to by Charlotte Lawrence called God Must Be Doing Cocaine. <laughs> and, then, and then he texted me an hour later saying, I want to get drunk. And he sent me a picture of him in the shower with the, with the shower just falling on him. <laughs> There's just the water just drenching him. It was a really sad time. But I was really glad that the money went to them. You doubled their bank accounts. Yeah, that's, that's sick. That's fucking nuts. Well, that's what I'm excited. That's why I was excited to lose. That's so cool of you. Yeah, and when when, when Ilya and I were about to play the game for $6,000, I was like, hey, man, I kind of want to lose this. And he's like, are you fucking crazy? Still in tears. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah. No, I'm stoked. I'm stoked that the money went to them. Oh, and the best part is John went home. And he gave half of it to his family. Really? Yeah, that day he went. He went home and he gave half. He gave three thousand dollars to his family, and then Mike and John surprised Alex by paying off his PlayStation Five. Wow! So it went a long way. It was. It was a good loss. It was a win. It was a win at the end of the day. That takes so long to like build up how much they had already, and you just like, like that's that's honestly so. And cool. they earned it. And they, they earned it. Yeah. And they kept rubbing it in. They're like, us two fat asses beat you. We're so fat. <laughs> and you guys are so fit. And, oh and Mike was like, that's why they're pissed. That's why <laughs> That's why Ilya and, uh, and Dave are pissed is because they're not fat like us. And they lost. <laughs> that's why they're so angry. Um, and it was really funny. They, they made me take a picture of um, the championship team. So it was them. And it, was, it was John and Mike in front of the spike ball net holding up the number one finger. Like, they made me take a picture of them. They're like, yo, can you take a picture of the winning team for us real quick? While Ilya's, like, in the corner, just fucking sulking. Joe, you know, when we see them, we have to remember to be like, yo! Congratulate yeah, them! Yeah, congratulations! You should make them, like, a, a big trophy, and every year, like, you change the nameplate on who's the champion. Whoever wins gets to hold the title. That That's sounds fun. like a you thing, Joe. It is! <laughs> Jay, how has 2020 been stressful for you or affected your mental health? Uh, well, a lot of my friends aren't calling me back. <laughs> right better, now. Well, BetterHelp will assess those needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment and you can start communicating. I do BetterHelp. You no, know, I know. I, I do know. it. It's so funny. Every time I read this ad, the beginning is just me shitting on you. <laughs> the beginning is, I need it because I hang out with you. The beginning is always like, how much you suck, Jay? <laughs> it's not self-help. It's professional counseling. Send a message to your counselor anytime and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches and has a broad range of expertise available and it's more affordable than traditional counseling. They offer licensed professional counselors who are special in depression, stress, relationships, grief, self-esteem, LGBT matters, and many more. So many people have been using BetterHelp. They're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash views. Join over 1 million people taking charge of the mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash views. I had the worst spending weekend, and then I was, and then I was coming back here to fly to LA. Yeah. And my flight, um, something happened where they had to like deplane everybody, and they're like, "We got to fix this. Everyone, go t- go for a walk." So they let us off the plane, which I've never seen happen. They're like, "Go for a walk." So I went for a walk, and I got to the store, and it was, it was like an art store. Um, 
and I ended up spending two thousand dollars at this fucking art store during my fucking like layover. It seemed like I was so pissed. Um, I bought this painting from from Disney. It's like it's like an it's like an original. It's um it's, it's one hundred one Dalmatians. It's one hundred one Dalmatians. I don't know where you're gonna put that. And I bought a sculpture. You don't have a basement with a pool table in it, so I don't know where that's gonna go. It's gonna go like in a bathroom. Okay. And and then I bought a sculpture, and then I bought um I bought another another painting that's being delivered. I just had because there was so much to ship, and then I bought another painting for the woman that was working there because I asked her what was her favorite painting and she's yeah. like I love this one and then I got it for her and that oh, was like that was, nice. that was like really fun for what Christmas she, say? she was like what? she was really it was nice because I was like you don't have to wrap that one that one's for you and she, she was really excited about it <laughs> so I, was, I had so much time to kill I was like what else can I do? <laughs> you spend a lot of money at airports yeah I don't it's know really weird I spent a lot I've never seen anything this weekend I spent a lot but it was Christmas so I was like, like in the mood to like whatever and yeah. all the money went to people that like you know, needed it. Like it wasn't like I wasn't blowing it on like a television. I was sure. just like, yeah. You normally don't have a credit card. That's why he doesn't. Oh, probably that's what it was. Much. I normally never have a credit card, and this time I had a credit card with me. Yeah. Boy, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, I don't. Now I you know why you don't keep one. I'm not allowed to have my credit card on me. He loses it. Yeah. So Taylor and Natalie always have it in their pockets when we go out somewhere. How do you care? Don't you have a wallet? Um. You have like a mini one, but you keep it in your backpack, or then he just throws it in his pocket, and that's when he loses it. Yeah. Why don't you put all your cards on your phone? Um, I don't know, cause like I don't Apple like, Wallet. I don't, I don't care for credit cards. Christmas sucked this year, bro. Oh, tell me a fucking about it. What happened with your Christmas, bro? I had to have a fucking four hour Facetime call. <laughs> what? With my, oh my god. It, it, with who? With my mom, my sister, cause they like want to open gifts and stuff. Oh my God! I love your mom. <laughs> I love my and mom too. And she listens too. to this, so this is gonna be hard for me to commentate on. But but that I love sucks. my mom too. But that it, it sucks because it was just like. Wait, what presents were they opening? My mom sent all these gifts. And you had to open those on Facetime. Yeah, we opened them on Facetime. Did you celebrate with your ex-wife? Yep. Then I went and had dinner with my ex-wife and her boyfriend, which was actually really great. He's 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 good. It is just so he's wait so amazing. Did he not listen to the last podcast where we talked shit about him? No, Joe and I cut that out. No, <laughs> yeah, we had to. Oh, you didn't know, Joe? <laughs> no, I had to, Dave. Joe, Jason. Dave, I was so glad, I, Joe. I was. I walked into that house and all I thought was, "Thank fucking God, we cut that." I you cut like, that out, you fucking assholes. I had to. You weren't even talking that much shit about him. I know I wasn't, but I just didn't <laughs> want to have any kind of bad blood or anything. He's so nice. Also, Dave, you would love this. Why? So, so we like had dinner, and then we're all just sitting around. And he was he was so nice and accessible that I was just like, I just was calling off actors that maybe he worked with, and it was a really fun conversation. So I'd be like, Have you worked with George Clooney? He'd be like, He's like, Oh yeah, I work with him. Brad Pitt? He's like, yeah, work with him. And, and then he'd tell you like exactly the no three ways. No way he worked with all these actors. David, he worked with all of them. It's, it, you know what it, but you but know what But doing what? What does he do? He's an actor. Yeah, well, how do we not know he's, this guy? He's, he's a good actor. But, he's, not, he's not, you know, he's not George Clooney. But it, it would be like, it, it, was, it was really cool, but it'd be the same thing if someone was like, hey, David, do you know Mr. Beast? Oh. And you'd be like, yeah, of course I know Mr. Beast. That was kind of neat. Wow. Have you like yeah, seen Damon, him? Name him. Name an actor. Mark Wahlberg. I didn't ask that one. <laughs> well, I should have. The just, Rock. You just told me to name an actor. The Rock. The Rock. I didn't name that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's worked with The Rock. <laughs> Kevin Hart. No, I bragged about meeting Kevin Hart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told he our story when he we didn't met even him. ask. Nope. <laughs> I just threw it out there. George Clooney. Oh, uh, Kevin Hart. No? Okay, because I've worked with Kevin Hart. <laughs> I mean, met him for 10 I mean, my Dave. friend worked with Kevin Hart, and he dragged me to his house. It was sick. Um, okay. That was sick. <laughs> what were you saying about going to Kevin Hart's house? Oh, I love going to Kevin Hart's house that day. Why? What happened? Like, first of all, you walked in, and the first thing you said was, he had, he had, a, couple, he had a bunch of nice cars, and yeah. you go, which one's your favorite? Like that. And then he just like went into a stand-up routine. He was like, oh, David, don't spend your money on cars. It's a fucking waste of money. And, and, like, and it was so funny. He's like, I hate them all. He's like, let's get, take this fucking picture and be done with it. Like, he was so like yeah. on but not on. He's right. just fucking funny. Yeah, he's really funny. You know, funny. and then he, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny to watch him be like put upon with his family and his kids and just complain. Like even at that level. Like that's a comedian, you know. That's a real comedian. He has all this money. But yeah, it still sucks. You and should. then Marty's in a great mood the whole time, which I was like, you've never been in a good mood when I was with you. Why was she? In, oh, because oh, cause her new boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, she was She was so nice to me. I was like, what? Wow. I asked him if they wanted to be on the podcast. What'd they say? He was receptive to it, 
and I just asked him in passing like another time when I saw him. I was like, you guys want to be on the podcast sometime? And he was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then Marty was like, Marty was like, ah, you, you, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Oh, like, man. That, that, that would be a funny podcast. You know what? I think it would be like it started off really fun and then I think I'd say the wrong thing. And then I think it'd be really awkward. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they know you and I think they know like no matter what you do, like they know you're a good person. Like oh, okay. deep down so if you like if you, if you go off the rails a little bit I think they'd forgive you <laughs> you know what I mean it's like they know you now it's not like you're just like some so gem- Monty I have this water bottle and this water bottle which one's closer <laughs> to Jason's dick and which one <laughs> and which one's closer to your new boyfriend's dick <laughs> Uh, Dave, we're gonna we're gonna go. It's really great about him is like he he's like very re- like receptive to the kids and stuff. He seems to like care about the kids, which is like if I started dating somebody, I would have a hard time caring about their kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be like. Oh. <laughs> At one point, I brought out like old videos of like Wyatt and Charlie when they were like four and five because my mom sent them to me, and we were looking at them, and he seemed genuinely interested. Really? Yeah, That's I actually big... felt bad after I I brought it out. That's a big test. Then I felt really bad because I brought up a movie that I like really loved. It's like this because we were talking about films, and I was like, "Oh, have you ever seen this this one movie?" And it's, it's kind of an obscure movie, and the um, the person that's in the movie went on to be like a huge blockbuster star. And I said, "Have you ever seen this little obscure movie?" And he was like, "I um, I passed on that," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, oh, that sucks." He would have been the guy. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh. I was like, "Oh, that sucks," and I was like, I, "I didn't bring it up for that reason." You know, you know, you know when you're having a conversation with somebody, and then like the conversation moves, and then the person circles back, yeah, because it obviously meant something to them, and he like circled back on it, and he was like, "It's uh, it's my one regret," <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. and then you were like, so. You have worked with George Clooney? (laughs) (laughs) And then you were like, you want to hear that Kevin Hart story again? (laughs) Me meeting him? That's really... That was my only... uh, That's really fun. Yeah, Yeah, that's really sad to pass. Have you ever passed on something that you've regretted? Uh, Jonah wanted me to... uh, (laughs) To be in the YouTube sketch? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You've never passed on anything that you regret? You, You don't have like one regret? No, I've never passed. I, but have I ever passed on anything that you've brought to me? <laughs> you, you've literally said, Jason, can I bury you in the ground? I'm like, all right. <laughs> I don't pass on, pass on anything. Yeah, you're right. Have you ever passed on anything? No. I don't have a single regret either. It's just really well, crazy. Why do people say that a lot of power and no? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I also <laughs> don't understand, like, the one thing I can, like, the one thing I think about the most is that the, the, the thing that people said I would regret the most is skipping prom. I always think of that. Oh, yeah. People, you skipped prom. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Why? I fucking hate dances. The f- I, for the amount of times that you bring this story up, I think you do regret <laughs> you do missing miss prom, prom a little bit. No, because we just brought it up again when we were talking about it. Okay. I hated prom because I, I – the main reason was um, just my relationship with my parents was like – weird where i didn't want them around other parents and a a big part of prom was where all the parents would get together and take pictures of all the kids and like my parents were very odd my parents weren't like the parents that were friends with the rest of the parents right so they'd definitely be like the oddballs like at you know at like my friend stephanie's house who was like you know pretty cool and like all the parents knew each other because they all like fucked each other or something like the parents were weird and and greg's landing Um, (laughs) but like my parents would be out of the loop and they wouldn't have like friends there so i just like didn't want to put them in that situation so i was like i'm never going to prom or a dance because like i don't want to witness that moment um that's why you didn't go to prom because you're embarrassed of your parents yeah that was like a big moment that was like crazy that was like a big reason your parents are so cool yeah they're the coolest they are the coolest but i just didn't want to be there for that moment i don't know i just never like i don't know i just never wanted i never wanted to see my parents uncomfortable like it was like a thing that did you know that it's named after the pilot (laughs) that was flying over (laughs) and uh they 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 crashed you told a lie to your dad my parents telling the greg's landing greg's landing (laughs) you know how they named this place right it was gregory and his and his wife amy they were going to los angeles they probably said that this is probably the home he built. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, why you didn't I don't know, go. but but dude, people were like, "You're gonna fucking regret it. You're gonna regret it," and not for a second, not for a fucking second did I regret it. 
You can experience the epic adventure Wonder Woman 1984 in theaters and on HBO Max, now streaming at no extra cost to HBO Max subscribers. Plus, with HBO Max, stream the greatest collection of series, movies, and exclusive Max originals all in one place. Discover something new to watch, like The Undoing, The Flight Attendant, His Dark Materials, and so much more. Go to HBOMax.com or download the app to sign up and start streaming today. Wonder Woman 1984 is rated PG-13. Wonder Woman 1984 available to stream on HBO Max for 31 days from theatrical premiere. I could have gone without prom. Oh, yeah. It how's wasn't your, worth it. How was your prom experience? Wait, wait, yeah. Who'd you go to prom with? I'm so curious. I just went with a friend, but, like, I remember senior year being super boring, and, like, it was just about the pictures for me. Yeah. Senior year prom was the worst experience. I, like, a week before, my date ditched me, and I had to, like, find someone else. Why did he ditch you? Um, I guess it was a long story. He was like, hey, like, <laughs> we just got to be friends. And I was like, what? And then someone else, one of my friends texted me and <laughs> said. This was a long story. Something about the anniversary of his of his grandfather, no, Greg's No, he brought landing. someone else. He brought someone else. <laughs> <laughs> he brought someone else. I remember being heartbroken. Oh, I so, so you were oh, he dating. took somebody else. Yeah, it was it was really messed up. Oh. Wait, what, Tay? Yeah, 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 it was really bad. So basically, we were like talking or whatever, and then um, he basically like one day was like, "Hey, we just need to be friends." But like this was like a week prior to prom, and I was like, "Weird, okay." And then he was like, "Yeah," and and I already got my dress. Like, yeah. And then, no. like, a week before, yeah, I, he was, like, like, I'm, I, my friend texted me and was, like, I'm, he's, did you know that he's taking somebody else? And I was, like, what? Damn. And so I was last minute trying to find a date. And someone luckily it wasn't school? so hard. Someone from the same school or someone else? Oh, no, same school. Wow. And two grades younger. Oh, my God. It was the, and they went in a different group. But, did you cry? Um, yeah, I was pretty upset. Oh my God, Taylor! That makes me really sad. What was the backup like? Oh, he was great. great. He was like my friend from like, I guess, yeah. He was my friend from high school. You were hooking up with this guy? Yeah. With with with, with which one? Um, the backup or the other? No, guy? the guy that ditched me. Oh. Yeah, it took me a while to forgive him. I can hear. Oh, the pain and then in they started voice. dating after. Uh, well, that's mm. nice. Then they broke up. Who'd you go with, Joe? A uh, girlfriend and then a friend the next year. Joe, you seem like the type of guy who would take his dog to prom. I'd love that. And wear like a funny matching tie with him. Yeah. And then the principal of the school is like, hey, man, you can take the picture, but you can't stay for the dance. <laughs> and then we both leave. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like talking about it for like the next like week and you feel so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was me and my, my buddy Rex. I'm the dog guy. <laughs> Yeah, you, Joe. You just give me like the the like like the vibe where like for yearbook pictures you'd like shave something funny into your beard. <laughs> Massapequa High School senior Joel Volpus had a different take on prom this year. <laughs> He's bringing his golden doodle buck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact vibe you come off. Dave, a man whose parents threw out his porn collection. I'm reading the same article. Because oh. <laughs> Joe said it's about the men. Yeah, a man whose parents threw out his porn collection wins lawsuit against them. The plaintiff <laughs> hopes to be awarded $75,000 for the destroyed property. Wow, that's fucking crazy. So, oh, wow, their son is 42 years old. And the, his parents threw out his porn collection. He valued the property at an estimated $25,000. Fox News reports that in August 2017, a domestic situation occurred where police got involved and the man was asked to leave. He eventually found a new place in Indiana where his parents dropped off his belongings. But what was missing was the man's enormous collection of pornography. The collection consisted of 12 moving boxes worth of movies, and the man's police report claims the assortment is worth close to $29,000. Okay, hold on. Okay. That is fucked up. Well, maybe he was like a collector. Maybe yeah. it was worth money. Well, no, I'm saying that's fucked up. That's not like a porn magazine. That's like, I'd sue my parents for that shit, too. Right. It's like he collected baseball cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. worth something. Yeah, that's fucked up. How old's your son? Uh, 14. Oh, he watches porn. I don't know. I started in sixth grade. Well, how old are you in the sixth grade? Four. Oh, no, you're like 12. 12. 12. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in the seventh grade. That's cool. when you I... want to run over there and have that combo? <laughs> no, I want him to come here for the podcast. Oh, God. So you're watching porn. We know. 
Because we started when we were your age. <laughs> uh, don't lie to us. <laughs> don't lie to us. We're going to check under your bed. <laughs> We've got Joe here. There's never been a moment where you've almost caught him, right? I always knock. I never. And I feel like you don't, like he doesn't live with you. So there's never a moment where you like get home from work early. You know what I mean? Even where... when I'm coming home, like if I'm coming home from the podcast, I'll yeah. literally like text and call. I'll be like, if, if he's home alone, I'll be like, I'll be like, hey, I'm going to be home in five minutes. I always let him know. That's really nice of you, actually. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's really yeah, sweet. My mom's got me jerking off a bunch. Yeah? No. My dad no. <laughs> My dad walked in on my girlfriend once. Wait. Girlfriend wait, doing what? what? My ex-girlfriend. Wait, what happened? My dad, normally he'll like knock on the door, like in our bed, in my bedroom, just to, like whatever before he comes in. Door's always locked. But then one time we were in my basement and he came down unannounced at like 11 at night, <gasps> which normally he's asleep by like 10. Oh and, my God. Uh, she was... Com- no, she was topless, boobs out, and she was just like standing there, like walking back to like the stairs. And my dad walks out. He goes, "Oh!" And he walks back up, and he saw her completely naked like that. Why oh was she staying God. with you? Wait, were you guys having sex? Why was she naked? Yeah, we just had sex. No way, you have sex with girls. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird seeing that come out of Joe's mouth. <laughs> yeah, even yeah, even hearing him say boobs, I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, okay, okay. So what did your dad, did your dad talk to you about it before? No, I avoided him for like three days, like straight, specifically, not to have a conversation with him. Wow, but but then did it happen or no? I don't think so. You've never talked to him about it? Never. You want to call him right now, get him on the phone? Nope. <laughs> so what was he coming down in the basement for? No idea. Just probably just to see the boobs. Probably. Where were you in the moment? Did she say any, what did she say afterwards? Oh, she was like by herself. She was like... They're in the main space, and I was in the bathroom. So, like, my dad didn't see me. He just saw her, and she just saw him. Yeah, but what did she say after? After Was she like, your dad just saw my boobs? She was in shock, and she wanted me to drive her home. Oh, whoa. It was that bad? It was just awkward. She's like, I need you to take me home now. Not in, like, an uncomfortable way. It was like, I can't see your dad anymore. I need to go home. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tay, did you, have you ever gotten caught doing something with a boy? No, never. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? Because <laughs> I would never get caught. <laughs> right <on>. Angel, remember? <laughs> right on. I just talked to my accountant mm-hmm. um, just to see how much money I have. I have actually have no idea ever how much money I have. Yo. Um, and I'm paying just this quarter. I'm paying a little over two million dollars in taxes. <laughs> Isn't that fucking ridiculous? Uh, just this quarter. Just this quarter. Just for the for the last three four months, I'm paying two million dollars in taxes. That's fucking nuts. Two million dollars, and it's you know why plus it's, the six for you know why ball. it's fucked and why I say that how much I'm paying is because it's just like. Like, let me have a citizenship here. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is this money going to? Like, for $2 million, get like... the roads. That's really messed up. Like, it's, get to use the roads. I get to use the roads. That's nice. <laughs> but, like, like, come on. Like, come on. Like, like I feel that's like... I feel completely like, 100% fucked. I agree. Like, every DACA kid who pays taxes. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, we're all paying taxes. Like, if we weren't paying taxes, I'd be like, oh, okay, we right. can't be citizens or, like, don't let us leave the country or don't let us reenter or whatever. But, like, the fact that we're all paying, like, what the fuck? It doesn't seem right. Like, that that's not fair at all. That's not fair at all. And, like, and like I only want to leave the country so I can make more money and so I can pay the U.S. more. Like, I just want to help out everybody. Oh, Joe, do you want to go – it reminds me. Do you want to go to um to Paris with Dylan Francis on Friday? Yeah. Okay. Are we still going to Italy after with Diplo? I'm, like, trying to work it out. <laughs> I just don't know if Diplo is gonna have the the plane for us. I can call Marshmallow. He has a layover oh, in you Australia. Know Marsh, I know Marsh. Oh, really? <laughs> I know Marsh. Yeah, there's a layover in Marsh Australia. Marsh is sick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. We go from Brazil to Australia <laughs> down to Antarctica. What kind then- of a sick joke is this? <laughs> oh, oh my God! I forgot this was your podcast. Crap. <laughs> I've asked Marshmallow actually this question, which is pretty interesting. I was like, can't you play like four shows at once? Yeah. Like, don't you just play? Like, can't you just make money in like four different countries and no one will even know? And he's like, he's never. It's it's always him under the mask, which I think is really fucking cool. Oh, I see, I see. So he'll never play anything where it's not him. Like it'll always be him. Sure. If I was him, I'd be playing in fucking. I'd be playing in Dubai, <laughs> in Amsterdam, all in the same night. I'd be doing New Year's Eve in like ten different countries. I'm sure people have approached him to have like marshmallow too. Marshmallow right. three, right, right, right. Gallagher did that. The stand-up comedian who used to smash watermelons, he farmed the act out to his brother. So there was two Gallagher's touring, 
I feel like we talked about this. Yeah, I think we did. We talked about this exact situation with Marshmallow and this comedian. <laughs> so we did. Uh, fuck it. And who cares? It's close to the new year. It's like a new... It's yeah, it's a clean slate. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's the new year. So we just do... We just start back from the first podcast and we just retell all the stories. Can I tell the, how you met me in the comedy club story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a okay, good one. Okay. People probably don't you remember that. You tell that prom story again. <laughs> tell the prom story twice. Oh, I hate podcast. prom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I would never go to prom. By the way, did you know I'm DACA? <laughs> you know what you do you do um you always get on us about that but i've listened to howard stern for years and yeah he, he tells the same stories yeah it's just impossible not to it's impossible not to and like your favorite stories will always be your favorite stories like i don't tell this i don't tell the same stories over again because like i feel the need to i just tell them because i want to right like i tell them because i love those stories so much and i'm just like like i just i want to i want to share them again right Squarespace empowers millions of dreamers, makers, and doers by providing them with the tools they need to bring their creative ideas to life. On Squarespace's all-in-one platform, you can build a website, claim a domain, sell online, and market a brand. Their suite of products combine award-winning design and world-class engineering, making it easier than ever to establish and own your online presence. From beautiful templates to powerful e-commerce tools, they help customers launch their ideas into the world to build their brand. Squarespace tools are DIY in nature, meaning anyone can learn about, use, or create them without technical expertise. Squarespace has a powerful e-commerce platform designed to help your business grow self unlimited fuck i was doing so good i was doing you so good. Doing good i was man. so impressed you still got this okay sell unlimited products and services online with no transaction fees and effortlessly manage your inventory orders and customers use squarespace's suit of marketing tools and integrations to help drive traffic to your site or grow your brand guys if you're trying to come up with the website this is a lot of big words let me break it down for you squarespace is the way to do it it's so easy to create a website with Squarespace. You get free unlimited hosting, top-of-line security, and dependable resources to help you succeed. Nothing to patch or upgrade ever, and 24-7 award-winning customer support. Check out squarespace.com slash views for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code VIEWS to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Have you noticed how, like, like obviously now that there's no movie theaters, like, studios are spending a lot more money. Like, not spending a lot more money, but, th- like, there's movies coming out a lot more on streaming. Like, every movie's coming out on streaming now. Sure. Like, HBO is releasing their biggest movies on streaming. Yeah. And, like, the movies are starting to remind me of YouTube videos. Like, how quickly they're knocking them. Like, they're, 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 they're producing movies as quick as, they, as, like, a YouTuber would produce YouTube videos, which is making me think now you're going to see a lot more influencers in movies you're gonna see a lot more addison ray a lot more charlie d'amelio's because like because it didn't make much sense to put in like uh an addison ray or like a david dobrik into a movie before because maybe i couldn't sell actual movie tickets like i couldn't get people to go out to the theaters but i can easily get people to go watch a digital movie oh right and like and i think that's what a lot of a lot of like creators can do and like a lot of tiktok influencers especially can like be in a movie now and they can drive a lot of traffic to the studio and that's all they want is like studios want traffic to their streaming sites oh that's interesting there's no more movie star hierarchy yeah there's no more movie stars now so i I think it's you're going to see a lot more like digital influencers be in movies hey tay do you want to build a house another time I'm trying. I'm almost finished <laughs> okay. with the, the deck. It's, it's fucking crazy. And every every time, I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she's making so much noise in the background. And every time I hear her making so much noise in the background, I talk faster to cover up. <laughs> That's why I was talking so fast because I was trying to cover up the sounds of her literally hammering in whatever she was doing in the back. How many times have we been podcasting and she's pounding the chicken? She, yeah, she loves. <laughs> she pounds the pork every time we're oh, podcasting. What were you gonna say, Joe? Uh, I know somebody who works at one of the big agencies here, and a lot of the movie stars are upset with this new deal of like going to digital stuff because they get a cut of those movie ticket sales. So now that these movies aren't being put out in like AMC theaters, they're not generating two hundred million dollars, five hundred million dollars. They're oh. not getting a percentage. Oh, of, of course, that. box office. Yeah, they don't have the box. Yeah. There is no box office. That's a huge wow. deal for these like top actors. They're not getting a cut of that. So like. The movie studios like Warner Brothers, they're pumped on it because they're getting the streams. They're right. getting the monthly return from people subscribing. But like these movie stars aren't getting any of that. And that's what all of these uh, theater houses, I guess, have to figure out how they're going to get compensated. Well, if the pan- pandemic has done anything for movie stars and has and has done anything for influencers, it's brought them a lot closer together. Like I feel like it's shot up influencers like crazy, like with the birth of TikTok and with movie stars – 
it's actually made them seem a lot more crazy. Like there's a lot of like, you know, like those videos of like all the movie stars, like singing a song together and right. they're like, let's raise money. Out and it's like, touch, yeah. and it's all of them singing a song yes. and everyone's like, what the fuck are these people doing? Why are they singing? Like it's, it's, it's made a lot of people realize that like, Hey, movie stars are literally regular people, if not crazier. <laughs> right. Um, and, and now a lot of influence, like, I don't know. I think it's a really balancing the playing field of like, what is, a celebrity and what is somebody that like w- yeah what is entertainment like it's also what? hard to like you give like a movie star like instagram and you're like okay go exactly like it's it's crazy to see that movie stars cannot you know they, they have to learn it they have to figure it out yeah. like instagram and like making stories is not something they do jay has there ever been a situation where like you're in like a dentist chair or you're like you know at a table and your waiter or somebody in your life that's come on to you and it's like really weird that this person's coming on to you no, I don't think so. No one's ever come on to me at all. <laughs> in general? Ever. <laughs> yeah, why do you ask? I don't know. I just think, I, I always imagine it's just like really strange. There was this one time, oh, there was this one time in New York, we were at like New York Fashion Week. Right. And um, one of the designers after the show came on to me. How old was she? Like wanted to go on a date with him that night. Maybe like 50. How old was she? Yeah, like what? 50. What? Yeah, yeah, she like wanted to go out with me and stuff. And and And, and, and how'd you diffuse it? I went out with her that night. <laughs> How'd you defuse it? Uh, we had sex. Yeah. No. Wait, did um, you hang out there? No, no, I didn't hang out with her. I, I don't know. I just, I was just like, I'm busy. I, I, I was flattered. I, I never think that shit's weird at all. Like, if anybody comes on to me and they're fucking seventy, I think it's fucking sexy. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm just like, it could be a gram, and I'm like, that's really kind that you've been alive for that long, and you think that I'm an attractive person. Did my mom come on to you in Hawaii? Did did your mom come on to me in Hawaii? She came on to me in Boston and then in Vegas and then yes in Hawaii. Yeah. And then uh um no, no, your mom never came on to me, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> I'd love to have that to hold, to hold over your head for the it's rest the, of your life. It's the one woman, but uh, yeah. Now has anybody ever come on to you? Um yes. There's only Of course she's a girl. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, know. it's so different. It's funny, like, when you're talking about it, you're like, if, like, a seven-year-old woman was, like, hitting on you, you're like, that's sexy or whatever. But if, like, a seven-year-old man was hitting on me, I'd be like, you're kind of creepy. It's well, yeah, weird. because that's, like, not as common for girls. No, because it's, it's more it's not, Sorry, it's more common for girls. Yeah. And it's not as common for guys. Right. Like, uh, if someone whistled at me when I was walking down New York. Oh, my God. Like, if I was walking down the street and someone cat called me, I'd be like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Because it's never happened to me. But, yeah. Okay. So, what's, like, the weirdest person that's come on to you? I wouldn't – I don't know if I have, like – I can't think of a weird situation. I mean, I don't know. There's probably many. But um, there was one time where I had, like, a movie – like, it was, like, a movie. Premiere. <laughs> no. <laughs> why can't you finish the sentence? I don't know. Well, why are you freezing? <laughs> you got this. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Okay, okay, okay. It there was, was a movie. What? No, 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 shut up. There is. There was one time <laughs> where this guy hit on me and gave me his number, and it was literally like a scene from a movie. Like it was straight out of a oh, movie. Okay. That's what I was trying to get. H- how was it movie like? I went to my favorite restaurant here in Studio City, <laughs> okay. and um, I like go there all the time or whatever, and. This guy who was, he wasn't even my waiter. He was a someone, he was just a waiter at the restaurant. And he kept walking by because like our kitchen was kind of, or our table was by the, by the kitchen. And he would like look at me and I was like, okay, like I know he's like checking me out. And, but you know, whatever, I just didn't do anything about it. And then I went out to valet. Dinner was over. I left, was at valet. And he came running out with a piece of paper and my number. And he was like, I would just feel so t- like distraught. And if I didn't give you my number and if I didn't like tell you. Oh, you know, wow. That's nice. See what's up. Yeah, it was so sweet. I've never had something like that That's how you met Todd? <laughs> wait, wait. So what happened then? Did you call him? No. You never called him? No. You just wasn't attractive? Was he cute? Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> He wasn't that cute. He wasn't your type. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. And I wasn't like, this was like last year. I was like not looking for, you know, when, David was running me around like crazy. I just didn't have time for That's when love. she was still into me. When, <laughs> when, right. when uh, you and a guy make eye contact in like a store or a restaurant, <clears throat> if you look back the second time, I'm asking from a guy's perspective because I've checked out girls very often. Like, in, in, like and <laughs> is the eye contact the second time? Does that does that mean you're well, in, or are you checking to see if this creepy person is still staring at you? I think. Well, I mean, there's different you know? types of people. So for me, I think either I'm looking to see if they're actually staring at me, or two, I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm like squinting. I'm like, who is that sort of thing? Oh, okay. I don't know. I never do. You talk about this a lot, like like the eye contact thing. I'm not. 
But that's kind of my personality. Like, I don't make eye contact with people, like, in general. You know? I don't know. I feel like I've been really good at, like, like I could tell, like, like if I'm, like, walking to an event or wherever I'm at, like, I feel like from the first eye contact, I could tell mm-hmm. if, like, there's anything there. You know it's funny? You guys are talking about eye contact. That doesn't happen to me anymore. What do you mean? It's like, I, I got to this age <laughs> where it's just like, no, I, 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 like, definitely when I was younger, like, I remember that. I remember oh, that is so sad. having, like, <laughs> making eye contact with people and being like, oh, maybe she's interested. And I can't remember the last time I had eye contact with somebody. Like, oh, really? I literally cannot. Like, people <laughs> walk by you like a ghost. <laughs> they really do. Wow. They literally do. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, you I, know- I, I absolutely know when Natalie said, like, eye contact. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember, like, being on a train from, like, New York to Boston when I was, um, in my 20s, it's, and I remember making eye contact with a woman, but then I, I never went over and talked to her. Damn, bro, you fucking, it happened so long ago, you have to go back to when you were yep. on a train. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I was on a train <laughs> <laughs> during the Great Depression. Roosevelt just got in office. <laughs> and, uh, um, no, I mean, it, it's really interesting how you can tell, like, from eye contact. Like, it, it's crazy because it's like, it's only two or three second eye contact, but it's so different than regular eye contact. <laughs> Like, it's regular than passing. I, I don't want to keep talking about it, Jay, because I feel like I'm just bumming you out. Oh, no, I don't care. I fully <laughs> accepted it. I mean, it's nice not having anyone in your life. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of advantages to what it. What are some advantages? It's, it's it's just like, I don't have to worry about anybody. I'm, not, I'm also, I'm not capable of a relationship. I'm just not. Right. I, I'm not capable of like. Are you saying that because you're like, I feel like you're saying this because you're just defeated and you're accepting it. And now you're like trying to be optimistic about the situation. No, no, because because the truth is, is like, would I rather like go out on a date or like hang out with Todd? And I'm like, I'd probably rather. Okay, hang out so with Todd. Scarlett Johansson <laughs> called right now and was like, I want to date yeah. you, <laughs> and I want you. To- hang on, Rick, hold on, that's that's Colin Jost's woman. So let's <laughs> like, be I want, nice I want you, Jost. I want, but yeah, of course, I fucking right. run to Scarlett Johansson, but right. I'm just not capable of it. Like, I don't think I, I'm I'm down to like share any parts of my life anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I have my kids. I might work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're looking at us like, uh, no, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm like... I've been desperately looking for a girlfriend. We don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I have 18 dating apps downloaded right now. I am successfully in love, so I just cannot relate. Uh, Matt, you're in love? Are you guys going to get married or what? Wait, you, you, you told Todd I love you? Yeah, of course they yeah. did. I've been with him for like a year now, David. Yeah, but <laughs> well, that, that ship sailed, David. Matt, you're a cold-hearted bitch. I wouldn't expect that till you're three. Wait, That's who said it first? Think. I mean, who do you think said it first? That's, see, there it is. But Natalie's yeah. back to being cold hearted. I think Todd said I love you before we even started dating. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's told me I love Todd you. Todd said I love you outside of Hyde when he first saw her. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I don't know what it means yet, but I love you. Wow, yeah. well, okay. Well, good for you guys. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you guys for listening. Um, hope you had a good Christmas and hope the New Year's is, uh, I, hope, I hope the New Year is a good one. And we'll be back next week at the same time with the same great show and i hope the new year is gonna be good i say that again oh <laughs> <laughs> well why are you yeah, laughing that too because i wasn't listening oh <laughs> i had like my own thing going on in my head. well i just think it's important this is gonna no, be big is. i don't right. know i i hope this year is better it's gonna be better i don't know how could it not <laughs> <laughs> all right see you guys my name's chef